Welcome back everyone, Mingpu here, and today I'll show you how to enable undervolting on the Acer Nitro 5. There's two methods that I know of on how to do this. The first, you find over on the subreddit Acer Nitro. And I would like to shout out James Matthew Magboo for pointing it out. The other way is pretty much like my G5 BIOS mod video, but has a few extra steps. You'll also see exactly what you are changing and the location of the address. Just a warning, you'll do this at your own risk, so if you think you'll mess up, please do not proceed. Also, this may void your warranty if you send it in and Acer finds out. If you have to get it repaired, just go back in and undo the changes. With that out of the way, we're going to need some software. Eufy tool. IFR Extractor, Grub X64, and the BIOS. You can get this from the Acer site in the driver and support section. Lastly, a flash drive with at least 120 megabytes in capacity. Head over to the Acer site to the product support section and grab the BIOS. Type in your model and expand the BIOS firmware section. My BIOS is 1.0, so it's not listed here. So I'll choose 1.03. If you updated your BIOS in the past, make sure to choose the BIOS version for your machine. I've looked through a few of them and they all seem to be the same for what we are looking for. Now download the BIOS. Next click on your main drive and go to Users, Your Name, App Data, Local, and Temp. You may have to enable hidden files for this. Now head over to your downloaded BIOS, which should be in an archive and extract it. Inside the folder, double click the EXE and wait. You should see a screen with your current BIOS version as well as the new one. At this time, you should see the temp folder being created. Go to the folder and copy the FD file. There will be two, so grab the one that matches your BIOS name. Paste it in a folder on your desktop. I'm naming my folder, Dump. Next, hit Cancel on the installation to make it stop. Next, open Eufy Tool. In the menu, go to File, Open Image File, and then locate your BIOS we just copied. Now you should see a collapsed structure, and if you open it, you will see some other text and locations. Go to Action in the menu and click Search, or you could just use the shortcut, Control F. When the search menu appears, make sure the text column is selected. Let's search for overclocking. Now that's too many, it's not what we're looking for. Uh, we need to refine this just a little bit more. The section we need is pretty much buried. If you had to do this, it would probably take you a long time, but Let's just go ahead and put overclocking lock in the search query and see what we get. Okay, here we go. Overclocking lock is found at this location. Double click the highlighted text in blue. The tree will open up and reveal the location. What we need is the parents of this section, which is located just above with the setup in the text column. Right click on the line that is highlighted in blue and select Extract As Is. I saved my file in the dump folder. When you are finished saving, close the program. Now let's open IFR Extractor. Under Module Location, locate the file we just saved. Once you have it loaded, click Extract. You will now have a text file with the same name. You can now close the program. This text file will allow you to see the offsets and whether certain features are enabled in the BIOS or not. Now let's search for the overclocking lock again and make sure the direction is down. Here we see the overclocking lock has a VAR offset of 0xDA and a VAR store of 0x3. Now according to the info under each section, we need to replace VAR offset to 0x0 to change from enabled to disabled. We pretty much have all we need at this point, 
but we should check to make sure that the VAR store is associated with the CPU at 0x3. Let's search for VAR store ID. Okay, there's a lot of them. Okay, let's do VAR store ID colon space 0x3. All right, here we go, right here. All right, that's all we need. Now, before we go, we know that the VAR offset needs to be changed to 0x0 and the VAR store ID is 0x3. We also looked up the CPU setup to confirm. You can now close the file. You do not have to save or anything and it was just used to see what the variables were and how to change them. Next, insert your USB drive and format it using the FAT32 file system. Go ahead and give it a name so you'll know exactly what it is. When done, make a folder and call it EFI. Inside that folder, make a folder called boot. Inside that folder, drop the GrubX64 EFI file inside. Rename it to bootx64. Close any folders and eject your USB drive. Restart and boot to your system BIOS by pressing F2. Go to the security tab and create a supervisor password. Not doing this will prevent you from disabling secure boot. Next, go to the boot tab and hit enter on the secure boot section to disable it. Move to the exit tab and select save and shut down. With the machine off, insert your USB drive. Boot the machine and hit F12. Select your USB drive and hit enter. At the command line, we'll verify that the command will work and can locate the address that we need. Okay, now we're at the command line and I'm going to hold this with one hand again. So I apologize. Hopefully it doesn't go out of focus. So we need to type setup underscore bar. And we're just looking to see what the setting is at the address okay cpu setup and the address will be zero x d a and hit enter all right so we're searching for the variable store and it comes back and says that the offset is set to 0x0. And the reason why it has that setting 0x0 is because I've already done it. So now that we can confirm that it can read, let's go ahead and write to it. So this is what you'll do because I'm sure yours isn't 0x00. So we're gonna do it again. I'm just gonna go ahead and you can actually go ahead and hit up on your directional keys. All right, hit space and type zero X zero. And this will give you the command to write. And mine is already wrote, but I'm just gonna do it again just to let you see. All right, successfully opened. And it's writing zero X zero to the offset zero X D A. And to verify again, there it is. So now you are done. All you have to do now is shut your machine down, boot back into the BIOS, enable secure boot, and then boot back into Windows, and then I'll meet you there. When you boot back up, more than likely, you're gonna have a password at your screen, and go ahead and type in your password. Uh, if you use the num keys, make sure the num lock is on, because if you don't, it will not actually put it will be putting the wrong digits in or whatever you set your password to so i'm just going to go ahead and put my password in and go on in so once you're in go to the boot and where we have secure boot disabled go down hit enter hit this prompt we'll go up on the directional key and hit enter and there you will see that it's enabled you can go ahead if you would like and hit F10 to save and exit. Hopefully you remove the USB drive, but if you don't want to do that, you can go over here if your USB drive is still in and hit 
save, and shut down. Hit enter. You'll get the prompt. Hit yes. Booting back into Windows, head over to Tech Power Up and grab Throttle Stop. Extract the software and start. Click the Fever button. Choose a profile. Put a check in Disable and Lock Turbo Limits. Click CPU Core. Check Unlock Adjustable Offsets. Adjust the voltage and do the same for CPU Cache. Save your settings and you're done. If you want to fine tune your settings, you can do that now as I won't be doing that in this video. Hopefully everything worked out for you and undervolting is enabled. If the video helped, make sure to share this video so others can get the info. And until next time, Mimpu out.